Hi, Brad. Uh, thanks for having us at your fantastic office and your setup here with the fuzzy brick and the uh, big little business logos there on the screen. It looks amazing. So we generally start these uh, interviews by asking the guests um, what they service they provide, what products they do, and a little bit of a backstory about how you got to do yeah, sure. what you do. So over to you, fellas. Yeah, amazing. Thanks for, thanks for coming down. Pleasure to have you and set, set this up. Um, so, yeah, I, I spent 17 years uh, in the IT sector. Right. Um, when I left A-levels, I was building engines until my mum was like, you need to get a proper job. So uh, I liked IT, and IT was being talked about quite a bit, making myself sound old. I'm 40 now. <laughs> but um, I was like, I've got to go and get this job. And uh, walking around Ilford and eventually just getting nowhere but finding this job of IT by, I had IT in the job description, so I just do it. Uh, I had an interview with a guy who um, then turned out to be very successful 17 years later. Um, in fact, much sooner than that. And our business grew very quickly. It was 30 of us that was based in Woodford. Uh, and this IT company eventually became the largest IT company in the world when it was acquired by a US firm. Wow. Um, and over 17 years, I loved it. My role was um, became director of operations and commercial, which basically meant anything to do with the operations of the business yeah. or commercial decisions, like saving money was mine and my team's responsibility. Loved it. Um, Travelled a bit of the world. Yeah. Uh, spent quite a bit of time in America. Fantastic. But after 17 years, I kind of felt like a really good team um, and I needed to test myself. I was 36 at that point and I had three kids and uh, travelling in every day, seven till seven, was pretty much the norm. Yeah, it yeah. was overground. It was a nice travelling. It was in St Paul's. But I did sort of come to the decision, Am I, have I really tested myself? And can I look back, 10 years on was in my head, so 46 years old, could I look back and say, I, I regret like not doing my own thing? Yeah. Um, I had family that were entrepreneurs and that probably spurred me on to think, oh, you think you're good at your job and you think you're really good and you're kind of, you've got this position of director, but can you actually run your own business? And I thought I'm willing to go and foul and I'm willing to make this big decision to go and leave. Um, yeah. which eventually I did in, um, in uh, 2019, so just before COVID. Um, and what started this business, Fuzzy Brick, was, um, and Mark come up with a name, so I can't take, uh, um, I can't say that one, <laughs> um, was basically, I bought some VR kit, you know, we got our yearly bonus, and I was like, oh, I don't, I'm quite tight, other than I'm spending money on cars. Um, and I thought, <laughs> I'm going to buy some VR kit. I've watched, I've watched online racing simulators of YouTubers right. playing in VR, racing in simulators. I got it, and I was like, this is so much better than I even saw from what I thought it was going to be on YouTube. <clears throat> and um, being around work, I was around a big big sales floor, and um, often days they'd do would be like donut days or like build a bridge with paper for like brand promotion. And I was thinking, why is this tech company and other tech companies I know not using technology for like brand promotion and fun? So suddenly I had this idea, we could start a business and I reckon we could give this a go. Um, spoke to a lot of people and said, what do you think of this idea? You know, um, if, if this business was set up, and they were like, yes, yeah, it's good. Like we'd be well up for it. And I had about 20 people and it's probably my first mistake because it was like, this is so easy. Like I know these people are gonna be interested mm -hmm. That this this is business is going to work, and of those twenty people, we got none of them when we actually set up the business. Um, and these are people I knew and trusted, and they were probably just being positive for me and going, "It's a good idea," but they yeah. weren't really decision makers. And that's one of the things I think was a lesson for me of even if you think you're switched on, you can easily get carried away with like, "Oh, this is a great idea." Like my family said, it's good. My mates have said it's good. I spoke to this person down the pub; they think it's good. And that is a classic, like when I speak to business owners, new business owners that I know now, they just get carried away. Anyway, tell you more about that later on. Um, so Mark left his sales job to come and work with me. And for five months, we were like, right, okay, we haven't got any of those customers, what are we gonna do? Um, and basically we, um, we met with a load of partners, a load of team building agencies and partners. And we really, we got the business moving. Very quickly, they were like, oh, this is good you do VR racing, but what else do you do? We need team building. So we're like, give us 24 hours and we'll come back with yeah, an idea. Yeah. And we created our first team building experience, which is our secret agent boot camp. So we go to a site. It could be like a hall if someone's doing a way there or in someone's offices. And we'll set up five zones in a room. And then we get people into teams and they rotate around. Sort of call it Crystal Maze, but in VR. Right. Um, and they're all team-based games. 
and people really liked us and we were different there was not really many competitors there was probably one competitor that actually were really good and had gone about a year and a half before us no one else was doing it and that's for me it's another thing like if there's not a lot of competitors doing it it is a bit of a red flag um but we took the risk and we did it um five months later covid hit <laughs> now before i went into it i was like this is going to be the worst business to run if you go into a recession entertainment and a recession that means this business ain't going to survive we didn't know that obviously this um, the, the worst case the worst yeah. thing could happen which we'd never really anyone predicted <clears throat> so i'm kind of optimistic like, that's really right like this it's going to die off we'll be fine like we've got to make a bit of money behind us we'll be all right we'll survive then it's going on a bit longer we're like no everyone's now out of the office no one's sharing headsets in an office so we typically go run a you know a fun day racing simulator that have fastest lap challenge in an office and yeah, fun yeah, stuff yeah. or team building no one's going to be putting headsets on in a corporate office no like mm. that that is a terrible thing to do so thinking on our feet we'd start to get into the metaverse before it's being talked about and we were like it was optimistic to put people in the metaverse and say, oh, you can all put a VR headset on a home and talk, talk to each other or high-five each other and do presentations. And we could do that. Could you, sorry, what, could you explain for us older yeah, 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 sorry, what yeah. the metaverse is? <laughs> so, the, well, the metaverse is talked about in various different ways. We, we basically create an online environment. Think of it like a game environment. And people join in VR. You, you can join like you would a keyboard, a mouse, and walk around the space. But essentially, if you were looking at it, and, and there's loads of stuff on our website about it, um you would see me in vr with my real face waving at you and we could high five and the controllers buzz um and we could present a slide deck and we could walk walk around a huge world so that could look like a traditional event hall um that could look like an office space and we could replicate those spaces and put branding in those spaces so in vr you'd be at home sitting here but you're walking around a desert or a jungle and you're talking to your friends engaging with your friends sharing assets like 3d objects um, or so you're basically present. creating another world. world yes that's in the metaverse oh man it's just blown my mind so we were then like this is really good we'll go on to this and we partnered with a, a big company um, in america because like, we're going to be on to something now people are buying into virtual events we'll, we'll make good money doing this and very quickly we had a lot of inquiries spent a lot of time kind of working on solutions to people but it's like everyone's at home and we've got to get headsets now at like 400 pound a pop to these people at home Mm. And it's a few hour event, and then we've got to pick them up. It's just too costly. The reality yeah, was it yeah. too costly. So we were then like, oh. do you know what? When when I worked at the IT company, I always come up with solutions and stuff. I didn't think I was creative. Now I still don't think I'm creative, but it really made me realise, flipping it, when you're under pressure, you you have to work stuff out. And I become I realised I was more creative than perhaps um, I thought I was originally. Um, we started to use the metaverse to make films. So now I only had to send a headset to a CEO of a company. And our pitch to the CEO was, look, you're going to do another Zoom call with your heads on a video call and you're trying to engage people by going, hey, this is where our numbers are. Next week, we're going to do a quiz. On... So we were like, we've got to make, there'd be people out there that would love to deliver a video of them in VR talking about their company presentation, but we can put a story and a theme around it yeah. in this virtual world. So um, they would send them a headset, they'd jump in VR, and then we would meet them from our office in VR and screen record it film it, edit it, and then we would create a three or four minute um, company video. So if someone was going to do their annual sales kickoff, the intro would be them on a TV screen in VR with their real face going through their company presentation. And we did some James Bond theme stuff. We did some um, Alpine house ski stuff for Christmas. Yeah. So we put this whole Christmas yeah. thing to it. And we put jokes in it, like reindeers running through the presentation that we could animate really weird like no one was doing this and we were kind of on to, well, we felt we were onto something i suppose it's limited it's, it's limitless isn't it it is limitless but you need a ceo it's like i just don't care i just want to do something for a laugh because it captures the audience and it was doing that so a 10 to 15 minute engagement rather than a, a one hour zoom call yeah, people yeah. Were like we'll do it so we we're like we're onto something here but obviously the time it takes to get good at it work it out and you're thinking on your feet and you're editing and you're trying to sell and you're trying to market it and you're trying to think oh and we did some really cringy stuff in terms of our marketing um the cringy works doesn't it <sighs> i think we've deleted it now so we won't actually find <laughs> it but um so we did we then did that then what we had during the pandemic is uh 
Apple and Samsung have both done green screen recordings. So it's like someone doesn't want to look like a VR character. They want to look like themselves on a stage. Right. And um, we realised we could use the metaverse to then green screen people onto a virtual stage. So we're still using the same virtual environment. But now we've got real whole body full length of people. God, my head's struggling to get around the corner. I know. Actually. I'll have to... Uh, Go on. So imagine looking Draw at, me a diagram. It, you've seen some of the green screen. So if you imagine like... Um, imagine Match of the Day... Right. But you've got two people standing and you're looking at the background going, I don't know if that's real or virtual. Right. And actually, in reality, they're just standing behind a green screen. Right. Now, they would typically do that live. We were like, we've got people at home. So how do we do this? So what we we got a job and there were 17 people all at home. So we sent them a green screen set. So they set up a green screen with a light like this and they used their own phones. And they recorded themselves and they were doing their company presentation. We would then help them choreographer the um, delivery. So if you were on stage talking and you were handing over to James, we would say to you, right, after you've said that, look to your right, say hi to James and welcome him on stage. You go, James, and clap. And we would then sync that up. So we put the two videos from two people together on this virtual stage, and it would look like you've just walked on stage and you're looking at this other person. Um, so it made it look like a real presentation on stage, like a TED Talk. We used a TED Talk stage in the virtual world. So we've got a job for that. And it was like, we're doing what Apple and Samsung have paid a lot of money for, and we're doing it from this office. Like, we've thought that's the idea. Even the company whose platform it was were like, we've not really thought of doing it in the way you're doing it in terms of, like, the animations and the green screen. Um, and they were, we were developing it with them as because the client would go, oh, we want the quality to be better. And we'd go onto the US and we're like, we need the quality to be better. Otherwise, we're going to lose this job. Um, and they made the quality better. And we tested it. We go, oh, yeah, here it is, the presentation. So... That was all really good and it was really exciting. Um, we really didn't do a lot of business other than those jobs. Um, but we did get to the position then where people were like, we're going to come back to the office. So by the time we'd worked this out, people were then go, we're going to come back to the office. And I'm yeah, going yeah. to Mark, we're going to walk into a hole because yeah. they're going to go back to the office, but they're not going to prioritise gamification and sharing headsets. Mm. So we're stuck. So we've got to really think about what we're going to do. I don't actually know how we survived but we did keep it going um, and we've come out the other side now more recently and you know we've rebuilt our website um, we've got a shop on our website we have trade partners that we engage with we have direct customers that can now come to our site see exactly find the right activity for them yeah. whether it's fun or team building get an immediate price online and book it not many people are really doing that in this industry it's like filling a form wait 24 hours yeah. and the industry we're in we're now you know four years in but we're really learning um, you know, some of the traditional stuff works. If you want Giant Jenga or Giant Monopoly, it actually mm. works. Mm. Um, we've obviously got that edge where it's like, we've not done this before. You know, that is our edge. And I would say, like, of corporate customers we do, we have 70% of them haven't used VR. So probably even more, probably 80%. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of having experience they've not had before. And um, it's really tough running a business because it's a roller coaster, as you know. Mm. And, you know, one hour you wake up in the morning and you're like what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Like I had a really good job and I loved it and I loved the people. <clears throat> and now I'm waking up like, what is the next, what, what are we going to do today? How are we going to get this next job? How are we going to get this, you know, get money? In? And then within half an hour, you're like, got this absolutely on it. No, I'm doing this is easy. Why are you overcomplicating it? And it is that battle. And you hear that story from so many people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've, we've come out the other side. We've had a, we've had a really good December. And um, we already come back in January, like, we're flat out now, just quoting people all the time. You know, you're out on the job, three more quotes come in. And you're like, oh, if you asked me in November, we launched our website. And I'm like, we've left this late, Christmas, it's late. Yeah, yeah. We've not got the business in. And you, a month later, I'm sitting there going, I've probably got to employ someone because we just can't keep up. Even with a self-serve website, people yeah. still want to hold in hand on certain things. So, um I love it. I do have a, I've got a business consultancy as well. So basically I do all the best bits for my last job. I go and do that for other IT resellers, so competitors of yeah. where I used to work. And I absolutely love it. I love mentoring people and teaching them and training teams how to negotiate, saving businesses money. Um, so I do that as well. But the big thing for this year is like I've just got to focus on this business. I need to get this machine running and it's not. But I think what everything we've done last year will see us uh, yeah, have a really good year this year. Yeah, it does take time, doesn't it, to kind of, you know, everyone says you talk to, everyone you've talked, we've, sorry, again, everyone we've spoken to yeah. um, 
so there's a period of time it might be three months it might be six months it might be 12 months but you've got to do that groundwork and get yeah. everything in place and tweak things and fine-tune things and then people come into it yeah. that opportunities arise because of the work you're putting into it you suddenly yeah. talk to someone who might not be anything to do with what you're doing but they go oh i can introduce you to so and so we can do this and we mm. can do that it so. is amazing like I, I think for us the last couple of months has been back to basics it's like we've got people that really like us that have got great connections with people and that one that's the first challenge i guess of engaging in sales is like that trust yeah to have that referral it's like it's like the 1980s like oh referral that's how you get business and you think well it's got to be social media it's got to be marketing we've got to have a really good like ppc campaign um and actually we've had most of our business from meeting people face to face yeah um, it's word of mouth it's really it's like it, i know it's cliche because people talk about this all the time now i guess like oh, i yeah. meet people face to face go mm. and take them for lunch and um, the basics is, is really working for us. But that's how it was done. I mean, my background is construction. Yeah. Um, uh, I've worked for construction and fit-out companies. Yeah. And you get the work from taking um, clients, architects, end users, yeah. you know, those sort of people, breakfast, lunch, beer after yeah. work. Yeah. And you're building that relationship. Yeah. And they go, actually, we've got a, a job you can look at if you're interested. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, oh, brilliant. Yeah. You know, I've been up at like three o'clock in the morning, but yeah, let's 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 go and crack yeah, on. We'll exactly. have a beer and yeah. we'll talk about it over a pint, and, and that's how it's done. Yeah. Same with golf. I mean, golf's been around pretty much to do that as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, four don't, and a half don't invite me to golf. No, I'm no. used to. Yeah. <laughs> it's a four and a half hour walk where loads of business is done. It's mad, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's mad. So we're loving it. It's been a real challenge, but things are starting to look really good. Um, and I think, yeah, we're unique. Uh, we, and we're mobile, so we go all across the UK and we can now deliver worldwide events, um, yeah. indoor or outdoor, anywhere in the world. Um, this last year, getting what you're in, um, we launched our GPS outdoor activity. So um, we just delivered one yesterday in Birmingham where we were, it, it, we, we've got a retro twist to it. So everything we do, we always think of how can we do it differently. So we had a retro theme song, video intro where it's customised to the client warms them all up and then we came in in shell suits running <laughs> like, a, like a, it was like treasure hunt basically annika rice um although we have to be a little bit careful because some of the people we do know are so much younger than us are looking at us like yeah. annika rice yeah. but um yeah we, we have a great laugh it's hilarious yeah. some of the stuff that we're now doing and i think yeah we've got something for every budget every team anywhere around the world so it's just the basics it is the basics of, yeah, yeah. And i think with what you do as well once the, the company or the team of people you're once they buy into that yeah. fun and that side of it and yeah. kind of get over the, yeah, well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Like we had to go with the, the, the headset thing yeah. a minute ago. First time I've ever done it. Yeah. And I know you've been looking forward to it for ages. <laughs> so it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know whether I'll have a go, but yeah, I'll have a little go. And you're like, oh, my God. Mental. It's amazing. Yeah. It is absolutely amazing. But, yeah. And it's that buying, isn't it? Yeah. So exactly. then I guess you get, you'll get repeat business out of that. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the good thing is, I mean, we've got some amazing clients, but um, you know, if we do an evening entertainment, they will often want team building somewhere else and for a smaller team. Yeah. And that's repeatable across multiple teams in their business. Um, and now it's these large companies have got peak around the world. So it's like, well, we can do this for you in the UK, which is maybe an on-site event. Um, and then in South Africa or Australia, we can run an outdoor activity and we can sync them as well. So we can actually have you have to be careful of time zones, but you can have basically two people in two different locations basically playing the same game on one leaderboard, but they can mm. be in two separate places. So we've got answers now to how a lot of our customers are positioned from, they're all at home, yeah. and they rarely bring them into the office. So we've either got that opportunity going, oh, are you going to meet once a year or once a quarter in the office? Can we do something for you to engage people, bring people together and have some fun and create a talking point? We're now going, okay, that's one opportunity a year. If you don't get an opportunity, you've got nothing from them for a year. Yeah, but yeah. we're now going, well, we can do escape room games on Zoom, or mm -hmm. we can do outdoor activities anywhere yeah. in the world, or we can come to your office, or we can do even entertainment. So we've now got something that allows yeah. cross-selling and upselling. So um, I love it. Yeah. Um, but um, I think this is the year. Someone said to me on your point earlier on, um, I always thought it was like two years, three years. You heard about like, oh, you, you might if you make money in two or three years, you've done you've done pretty well. But um, someone said to me the other day, when you get to year seven, you tip. That's the average of when you look back and go, oh, we've now got a business. And I was like, flipping heck, that's scary. Yes, seven. when we were at year four, I mean, we've gone through COVID. We had some other yeah, big yeah. consultancy projects, so we haven't technically done this full time for four years. 
I mean, I've still got another three years, so I don't feel too bad that in three years' time I'm going to wake up and go, we've got a business. Yeah. But, um, yeah, someone said to me, in seven years, you might make money and you might have a business, but it's just seven years where you go, that's a that's running. I've got people to run it, and it's, you know, yeah. if, you, if it's doing well, of course. And, and just um, think as well, though, in three or three, four years' time, how different this technology will be and how yeah. advanced it will be. Yeah. You've got to learn. You, I mean, you're learning all the time, exactly, aren't you? Your, yeah. your company evolves because you've got such a kind of niche project, yeah. product, yeah. and you can, you're can you always implementing and changing and tweaking things yeah. to suit different clients. So yeah. as technology evolves, you're kind of learning on the, on the foot as it was. And, and yeah, exactly that. Expanding. And it's when someone goes, oh, we've done all this with you. What else have you got? I mean, we've, we've got the ability to react. So if you said we need a flight simulator with a motion rig, we'd just buy the motion rig and we'd start going and delivering those activities. Yeah. Um, which I think is is one of the key things I've learned is often people go, I've got this idea, I think it will work, right, I've got to spend 10 grand on some kit. Actually, the first thing you've got to do is know you can get the kit, know you can hire the kit and do that first job for investing. Like, I know loads of companies, they shell out loads and loads and loads on kit, but they haven't got the sales. They think yeah. they'll get the sales and they probably will. I'm sure they'll be great businesses, but they burden themselves with financial debt when really they should rely on, go and sell it, go and sell. If you confidently can deliver it, you go out and sell it. You don't need to buy the kit. If you get the yeah. job, or if someone goes, can you do it tomorrow? You don't have to say you can do it tomorrow. You say, yeah, look, yeah. We've got, we're booked. Yeah, but yeah. we could do that in two weeks' time. Um, Which gives you time to buy the kit, learn how to use it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's not to sort of diminish like being no. credible. But like so many people are like, right, before I start, I'm going to load myself a 10 grand debt. Then I'm going to learn how to use it. Then I'm going to learn out what the actual mar- learn about what the market's like and how yeah. to deliver it. Then you're going to realise it's not a good idea because you don't like setting it up. It's too painful. It's then you four or six in. months in. Then you're like, I've got to sell money. this kit, and now the business is folded. Yeah. And that's the, I see loads of people doing that, um, and that's a big thing for me. I mean, we we did it a little bit. We sort of was like, oh, I'm so confident. We'll put a little bit into this, but I mean, you, we could have put a lot more in to start with. And now I realise, like, start small. Yeah. Go and hire it in. Even if you lost money on a job, if you're starting off and you've got an idea. I would say, like, think of even if you did happen to lose money, um, that's a learning experience. You're mm. paying for education. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think about the money that I've invested, and I think it's it's better than paying for most university degrees and any sort of course out there. Because I'm learning on the job. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, the stuff I've learned, I'm still an amateur. But I've, I've learned so much. I would never have done that in my job. Yeah. In a senior position for a very successful business, thought I knew everything, and now I feel like I'm much more well-rounded in like business and and startup, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you've good. had to learn all of the the bits about the marketing, the pitching to people, and all of the other bits that are involved yeah. in running a business. It's, you know, it's you and Mark, and you are kind of both out there doing it. Yeah, it's not if you've got a big team, it's no, like exactly, us yeah. two doing it. We've got to learn the editing, the yeah. how to yeah. set the camera up, and all that. Yeah, exactly. Bits and pieces, and it's just you get there, but and you evolve, and you look back and think. Quite as hard then, it's easy now. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And once you've got the blueprint, then it's the opportunity to go, I need to now invest in someone to yeah. do that. Um I'm hoping we'll be there this year. Um, because I've got plans for my other business and some really I think cool stuff. I don't know if you can you say business consultancy is cool, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I love it. It's, it's <laughs> what it is, yeah. Yes. Um but I love it and so I've got like plans for that. But obviously I will always be involved in this business and pushing it along, and I mm. think We've always got the edge. And look, technology is harder to deliver. A lot of the team building games and activities out there, it it is like, you know, putting up a tent or, um, you know, some planks that we'll bring into office and play a game with. It's really simple. It can't yeah. really break. Um, with ours, we, it is this learning thing. Like we take two routers, two screens, two computers. We double up everything. So, and that's the sort of things you don't think about initially. Like, well, what about if that one power supply is worth 10 quid breaks? Like, we've lost all our ability to deliver yeah. it. So that is the challenge. It's probably why it's a harder business to get going with. Um, and for us, it's all about being compact. So we can get up any stairwell, in any lift, into any location, because it's just all we can carry mm. in our hands. We don't we don't have full-size like, motion simulators that we've got to put into trucks and stuff. Yeah. So we have a different angle to it. But, um, yeah, loved it. What what are, what are the last four years it's been? It's good. Yeah, I, bet. I yeah. think it's a game changer. Just this is this for me is the future. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. The gaming market is like massive. Yeah. A lot of the games we, I mean, we've got like really high graphical games, um, and then we've got like quite just fun, simple games like you know our skiing simulators. One minute fun. 
Mm. And that's actually what, at a corporate event, you know, people are drinking, we do put them in the chair for skiing, game, just they don't fall over. But um, Yeah, I would be the one to fall uh, yeah. over. <laughs> but uh, we put them in a chair, uh, we do a one minute game, and it's huge, huge amount of competition. We were at a job in Liverpool a few weeks back, and of this, you know, they had an amazing band, they had some like, um, you know, that surfing on the, on the inflatable yeah, yeah. cash grab. And most of the people were just surrounded by what we were doing because it was different. We put all the snow down on the floor and we bring the props together to kind of create a theme. And um, yeah, you stand back and you have those moments. You're like, oh, this is why we did it. This is yeah. why we did it. Um, a few weeks back, we were in Birmingham and we set up six VR stations in a room. We like created a mini VR arcade for them right. at their event. And uh, we had a big team out on that job. And you sort of like, you're walking around and it's like, oh, this, this one like 30 seconds of... Yeah, we're doing this and we're really credible and people love it and they're all having a laugh and no one's really doing anything like this it's like oh, that's why we did it then the yeah. next morning you wake up and you're like right okay what kit broke or like what else yeah. we got to do to get more sales in but um yeah it's good i wonder when you when you started talking about um your previous um role you had in it mm. there's one thing you said and i wonder if you could just tell me a bit more expand a bit on it, but you said you were willing to fail Mm. So having, I think having that mindset yeah. is very important. Why yeah. are you willing to fail? I think it's a sign that you're learning. Yeah. Um, I always used to say to my team, like, I want you to fail, but I want you to fail once. Like, um, because if you're not failing, you're not pushing yourself, and I want you to feel uncomfortable, and I want you to just get used to, because as soon as you get that mindset, if you're worried, you're going to pull back and yeah, you're going to be yeah. fearful. You're not going to commit. Exactly. And if you, if, but if you keep making the same mistake... Um, then that's becomes more of a, more of a problem. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Um yeah. And also, how did you meet Mark? Are you both from the same Do you know what? I've known Mark through our best mate Joe. And um I'd known him since I was probably 17 or 18. And he, I knew he was a car guy, but for whatever reason, actually Mark went to uni and Mark went to college, did all the things I didn't. So he's the smart one of the two. He's the smart one of the two that wanted an education. Yeah, that's why he's not on camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um so I knew of Mark, and then when Mark came back to work, Mark got into the clothing industry as a sales rep. So for Gant and Scotch and Soda, yeah. I've worked for a few of those guys. Um and I known him through just car meetups and stuff. Yeah. So then I I'd sort of I wasn't that close with Mark. Um and I basically, we went out one evening and I was like, you enjoy my job. I don't know if I was trying to sell to it, maybe I was. And he goes, oh, I'm working late and I get, in, like, I get in at seven, I'm coming home at 11 at night. And I was just like, he was getting married that year, he was having a kid that year. And I thought, this is risky. <laughs> what a great well time risky. To ask him to jump what a great time. But I was like, I think we can do this. And Mark wasn't into technology. He was a sales rep. Um, lovely guy, very trustworthy. He's there, so I'll sell some nice. Yeah, he's he's twelve foot away. Yeah, <laughs> well, not big, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> What's smashing chap? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I was like, we're gonna. Oh, I think we do this. And he trusted me, and we took a risk. I mean, that is a, that was a bit of a risk because I didn't know Mark well enough to think I could be sitting next to him every day. Yeah. And it's strange how like the same music, the same humour. Um, He's very good in front of customers, very likeable. You spoke to him this morning, very likeable, very yeah. engaging. And it's, it was fortunate for me to, because, you know, some people almost the family, they're too close to them, then they work together and it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. That was a massive blessing. It's like, we're getting along. And he's so committed and hardworking. And obviously now things are starting to pay off, but it's taken four yeah. years and it's not been easy. But I think as well, if you are, if you have a sales background, standing there in front of clients and trying to pitch them, it, it probably comes more natural yeah. than uh, an IT guy. No disrespect, yes. but do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've had to you know, wind and dine clients, etc. So I'm yeah. okay talking to people, yeah. whereas yeah. you find it a little bit awkward sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, get on with, you're, you're just a human being. You might yeah. be the CEO of a company, okay. but at the end of the day, you either, you might be a West Ham fan, okay. you might have three kids, and we can all, you're something. Yeah, what's, there's, their there's some things, what's, what's their thing? You find yeah. that out. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, agreed. So... In the four years, what have been the, the biggest challenges for you then to, to, try, to try and grow and get to the point you are now? And oh. is there anything you would have done differently? Yeah, there is. Uh, I mean, like five months of all the people we built up in our network in the first five months, they all just left. They left the industry. And most of those people we've made, um, you know, relationships with businesses closed. Yeah, because of the COVID thing, yeah, was it? COVID wiped them Yeah, yeah. Um, they couldn't adapt and... Uh, 
and a lot of those people they become bus drivers um like gym staff fitness um you know plumbers electricians it was like we've lost our entire network and we've yeah. lost most of the businesses um one thing i would have done differently the metaverse thing helped us but it consumed a lot of time in hindsight we should have jumped on delivering virtual events uh over zoom that took off and yeah. um, we didn't have, we just didn't think that that was we didn't think it was going to last that long yeah yeah mm. and so and i never liked the idea of delivering events over zoom so i was like i feel fine doing it but i just don't, i don't think it's the right thing to go to um and a lot of people adapted they did do that and they did all right out of it did really well out of it in fact some of those people then ditched all their other ideas stayed doing virtual events and then their businesses don't exist now so yeah. they made the mistake on the other end so i guess i'm i'm more fortunate that we at least probably probably got it right on the other end um at, at the end of it um what do i think about where we are now i think we're only just starting to go in the last couple of months like we've got something yeah. now uh, we're on it the things that i learned yeah we should we should have probably spent less time on the metaverse and spent more time thinking what's popular and just adapt and do it because we were good at that and we should have just done it um what else i don't know it's early days really our big thing now is we've got a website which gives customers every single answer they can think of yeah. So operationally, when people are asking for quotes, we don't have to say, oh, you need this amount of space. Oh, no, it doesn't include a host or it does include medals or it does. Everything's online. Yeah. That took us a lot of time to do. I rebuilt the website twice. I learned how to do it because I was like, I just want to learn how to do it myself. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good website. You can buy online. You can quote online. It can do things that the industry doesn't typically do. Um, and we get customers now going, oh, I've seen this indoor escape room. Um could you just help me, you know, with a quote? It's like, well, you can do it online, but we'll show you and we'll do it for yeah, you. Yeah. So um, I think we've made all the right moves now. But sorry, I think I think that's nicer when you've got someone ringing you and talking to you because you get a better feel for what that person actually wants. Exactly. And what they want might not actually be what they want, if that makes yes, sense. Yes, exactly. They, they go, we want something. this. And you're yeah. going, well, can I ask, look, like, where are you? And it's yeah. like, well, we've got 30 people. Okay, what type of people are they? And what stuff have you done before? Yeah, yeah. And then we know how to pitch it. Mm. And that is like one thing that I think we're quite good at. Yeah. Uh, and all of our stuff, we like brand it. So we'd say, well, what's the theme of the event? It's like, oh, drive-in success. Okay. Could we have some things that are like drive-in or something we're saying drive-in for the future or flying towards the target or flying towards our revenue target yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And we build the brand around that. So, um, yeah, that's, I think. Yeah, because if you've got your filling an online form, it's very... There's nothing there, is there? No. You've, you've got their name, address, what they want, and the basics. And then it's cold. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you, when you've got someone on the phone, yeah. you're instantly building that relationship. They're getting to like you, understand exactly. what you're about as well, and going, yeah. actually, these guys are going to smash this. They're going to yeah. deliver this for us. Fun or Can't right. wait. You know. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, but when it actually comes to the point of you know doing the activity, they're going to they're gonna know. They're going to be a lot more relaxed with yeah. you. you know, exactly. You've got that personal. Yeah. And it was like yeah. yesterday at this job, they're like, oh, we just want you to come do another event. I think the, the big thing I've learned is probably in the last year is um, don't try and convert people to having fun. So if you're pitching with someone or you're warm calling them, whatever you want to call it, um, it's easy to say, oh, what's the, what, what sort of team building activities do you typically do in a year? Yeah. When they go, we don't do team we building. Don't, yeah, yeah. I basically, it's a red flag for me because I think I don't want to convert you to thinking this is a good idea. Because you're not innately thinking that it is a good idea because you've not done it before, so you haven't experienced it. This is a much harder sell. Um, when people go, oh, yeah, do you know what? Every quarter we do these fun days. Yeah, yeah. We're like, we know. When when was the last time you used virtual reality in one of your fun days? Or tell me about the last fun day you had. How would you rate it? What did you do? When they say we did I don't know, Giant Monopoly, it's like, I guarantee if you thought that was good, like, we'll give you something you've teams have never experienced before. Um, and we know we can deliver it in any location. So we know we've got all the answers. But mm -hmm. rather than going, oh, we've got this great team experience. I think your team would love it. And they're going, mm. I, don't, I don't even know really what you mean by team building. Some people. Mm. So I definitely think for anyone, anyone starting their own business, don't try and necessarily try and convert people. That's much harder. You yeah. have to find the audience that already wants your stuff. And basically yeah, yeah. then explain why your value is mm. better than the competition. Yeah, and do you find? I mean, I know you've said about the website as well. I know mm. you're on social, <clears throat> excuse me, social media. Yeah. Do you find that the that having that website drives more traffic to you customer-wise, or it's the social media side of things because you can put up kind of more 
live content, can't you, on the social media? Does that do you get more engagement? Which ones do you get more engagement from? I mean, our website traffic was very poor. Um, since we launched in November, we have now good returning customers and good volumes. So yeah. We're always tre- checking the data on it. Um, in reality, it's still very low. Um, for us, like short form um, social media engagement, just so we're constantly in front of people. Yeah. I think the thing that the thing that got me earlier on, you know, like when you hear like you need seven product placements for someone to actually be aware of your product, and often people go, "I've done one. Why don't they like it?" And they just sort of give up and you feel deflated. Mm. Um, I think the thing for us has been um, just constantly just putting out stuff, just constantly being all of my mates on like, for example, LinkedIn. Like a lot of our corporate customers yeah, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, I don't want. I don't even really care if someone doesn't engage with it. But if I get an impression, I know I've just imprinted on their head that team building. That's what we do. Because an hour later, when they're speaking to someone, they're going, "Oh, we're doing this team away day." That one impression is that conversation that changes to, "Are you doing any fun?" My mate's got this interesting yeah. thing to do VR, and it's that which enables us to win. So, in answer to your question, our organic traffic website is low. We know how to, we've learned a lot around SEO and we've done some tests and we've got some really good ideas. But, you know, with website development, people say, oh, have you got a web developer? It's like, yeah, that web developer doesn't, under- yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's also, but if that person, are they a web designer or are they a web developer? Do they understand business? Because they don't understand your strategy, you're building keyword strategy mm-hmm. for rubbish. And if you don't understand your keyword strategy in your competition, then don't start building your website. Yeah. And most people want a nice looking website. But actually, now I could say it's so much more than that. And it does need to look good, but it's got to perform well. It's got to be on multiple platform. People always build yeah. from desktop, never build from mobile. Everyone's on mobile. 80% of your traffic is mm. probably going to be on mobile. And then you build it all, and you're like, we're well, not ranking. It's like, well, what's your keyword strategy? Well, we don't know. We haven't done it. Then yeah. you do your keyword strategy, then you rebuild all your website. So I think we've learned a lot. I would say I don't think we need to do like P, uh, PPC. Uh, yeah. advertising not now I just don't think it would be worth our while we've got back to basic strategies that I think are working for us but um, yeah I think we're, we're really clear on our bifold doors to be honest we write everything like who we're going to target how we're targeting yeah. them how we're using LinkedIn how we're using Sales Navigator um, but there's just a load of people in our network and it's really simple like we over it before whereas now it's just like and even to an influencer in a business it's like Who's the person or business that deals with fun, like team activities yeah, or cultural yeah. development? And when they go, oh, we don't have anyone. Yeah. It's like, okay, do you do anything? Like, no, we don't. Okay, fine. But then often it will be. It's, you know, my point today is just be kept. Don't waste a lot of time because yeah. you're convincing them to do team building. We want the people that go, yeah, we do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Or in the top 100 UK best places to work, they probably do this sort of stuff. Yeah. So we're like, we're wondering, how would you rate your last team building event? Would you consider trying something really different that's going to blow your team away? Yeah. And it's often, oh, yeah, I'm intrigued. What is it? And yeah. then, and well, I'm guessing LinkedIn, because it's quite corporate, that's probably one of the best ones for you, isn't it? It is because we just target corporate yeah. customers, really. We don't do like kids' birthday parties or or even really private stuff no. in the evening. Um, just typically like racing simulators and stuff with kids going on them. They can't really fit in the seat. And they can't really drive, so you spend more time just like getting them out of yeah. a wall of a of, of a racetrack than actually driving around the thing and enjoying it. But um, we do it if it comes to it, but to, we don't target it. So yeah. No. Would you say you were saying about keywords on your website? Yeah. So in, do you use that in the same way as if you're having a conversation with somebody? Would you wait for those keywords of what they're saying and then kind of you know? Well, from a key, from a, like a Google perspective, like Google Trends really good. So it's not just what are popular keywords that people are searching for. Because the thing with Google is, obviously, people are searching with intent. Mm. Mm. On social media, you're placing your, based on a profile. So you like cars and you work at a corporate IT company and you're this age. Um, they don't necessarily have intent, but you're giving an impression mm. to someone that might engage with you. With Google, obviously, people are going, I'm looking for team building. So Google Trend is really good um, because not only does that say, is this a popular keyword, but it's saying, when is it a popular keyword? So for us, team building in January is is a really popular keyword that people search for because they're getting, they're planning, right, new year ahead. We've got to plan some activities. What's the fun? What team building can we do? Or, you know, really fresh start. I manage a team. How do I bring my team together? So people are searching for that. So you need to then build pages, obviously, around those keywords that are valuable to people. Mm. Uh, or produce blogs like 
2024 team building ideas and produce blogs around that content. Now, I'm by no means a really good writer. We do use a little bit of chat GPT and then trying to humanize it. But there are people that are very, very good at that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for keyword research, there's some great tools out there that you can use. Like we use Dib. We track our competitors. Yeah. We know what they rank for. We know mm -hmm. how many volumes of traffic they get a month and what they rank for. And we know what opportunities there are out there for words that um, there's some really clever stuff that people do out there. It's probably not clever to most people that know what they're talking about, that know this game really well. But um, there's some really clever keywords you can use for high traffic to your website and then cross sell them into your product. Yeah. So, um, but it's a full time job. Yeah. It is yeah. a full time. This is the thing. Once you get good at it, I I'm trying to get good at it to a point where I can have a conversation and challenge someone if I'm going to pay them to do my keyword. Yeah. Um, because often, you know, if you know, if someone's marketing or doing social media, I look at what they're doing. I think I don't think that's good. I don't think I do is good, but actually, I just don't think that's good. And I yeah. think I know what to do. But we just got to get good and keep putting it out to mm. then get good at doing it. Um. So yeah, keyword for me is what's the what's the traffic searching for in the world or yeah. in the UK? Yeah. How important is it to you guys to know where your competition ranks, how they're doing, and how they're performing? Do you do you, do you because it, it can have a positive and it can have a negative, that kind of, because you can think, oh, I'm doing better than them, that's great, we need to keep ahead. Yeah. But if they're doing slightly better than you, do you think, right, do we need to change things? What, are, you, are you always adapting to I, change? I'm so, I'm so competitive. Like, in anything, <laughs> I'm so competitive with, with literally anything. Um, I love the challenge. I, I love failure. I love it when, uh, when you lose a deal. Or something, because I'm just like, why did I lose it? How yeah, could I have done better? Why am I not going to let that happen again? How can I convert the customer back? Um, I just find everything a challenge. It's a little bit weird, really. But yeah. Um, yeah, when I look at competitors, no, for me, it's just a benefit. I, I admire the fact they've done that well. Yeah. I admire the fact. I look at You go to the page, it's linking. You think, there's nothing good about that page. I could out-compete that page, no problem. It is just a question of, do you want to pay someone a lot of money to do it? You would pay, I say a lot of money, yeah, yeah. you'll pay... If you want it done properly, I reckon you need to pay 30, 40 grand. Right. I think that's probably how long it, and then it just takes time. Yeah. And you've got to have a good website. So, you know, it's, it's which a is number, another chunk of money, isn't it? Which is another chunk of money. So you can sort of do it yourself. I think ours is credible. Like we've got stuff we want to do to improve it. But it is that thing then you start making bigger business decisions like, oh, that could take us, but then yeah. we've got to make sure we can, we can scale. And we do have a good, great team of people we bring in to deliver our events, great people. But it is then like, right, we've got scout. And you've got to think, is this office big enough? We're going to have to rent somewhere. I'm now not working at the end of my garden and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. You're like, mm, I quite like this. I do love it. I love the challenge. But also, I love the work-life balance. I'm going to say work-life balance. I mean, like, I work a lot more hours than I used to, but I think I've got freedom. Yeah, yeah. So I can go and pick the kids up from school and take them to school, take the wife for lunch and go for a breakfast and do whatever I want. But the reality is you're working hours. Like yeah. you are, You've got to be committed and relentless. You've got yeah. to be, like, so so determined yeah um, yeah and that, that's well, something that pops up isn't it one of the people that we've interviewed and spoken to so far it's you have got that freedom of running your own business but potentially you are going to be working 12 15 hour days exactly yeah especially at, at the front end because yeah. you, you're taking on these you're you're taking on several hats for different Finance. roles right. yeah and you think i need to learn that i've got to do that develop oh, systems what do yeah. i do first and you say like you, you're eight hour day extends into 15 it does, yeah mm. you this goes from five to 50 yeah like, what do i do first well that's gonna take me an hour i can take two hours i'll do that first yeah. and then all of a sudden six months down the line yeah i haven't made any money yet. yeah yeah exactly you know yeah. Yeah. and it's and it's finding that balance of those learning those skills or outsourcing yeah mm. and it is also that thing of like if one thing i'd say for like anyone's looking at running a business if it's that itch and they know they're relentless even if they're like, I'm not sure on the idea, and some of those things I said earlier, I think are great things to go and do, go and do a job, maybe lose some money, you'll learn so much. Um, but I would say is you'll find yourself then, if you're good at engaging with people, you'll find yourself going, oh, actually, you know, if, you were doing, if we were doing VR, and I knew my customer wanted staging equipment to deliver events, I could easily pivot to doing staging equipment. So yeah. if you're relentlessly good and you're self-aware, well, you're not going to turn your business into just a huge financial debt then I would say you'll find something and you will do it. And this, the sense of reward is incredible. But yeah, it is that thing of, I need to be eight different people here. Yeah. Like we're developing systems. I'm developing websites. We're designing leaderboards. We're editing videos. Yeah. And we're, you've got to be a husband and a dad. Exactly. Yeah. To yeah. breed life for kids. So yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's it's good. I'd never change it, but flipping it, I'm I can push through. I think I can push through anything mentally, but when you wake up in the morning and you're like, yeah, hearts in your stomach, and you're like, what the heck are you doing? And a lot of my mates were like, I cannot believe you've handed your notes in. I just <laughs> cannot believe it. Um, and a lot of them are still there and still going. I can't believe you did that. That's yeah. insane. Not that they're jealous because you're just doing this. I don't know. I mean, they're all very successful games. people. Very, very, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, in the start, we were playing loads of games. So I was like, Mark, we've got to get good at the games. We've got to get good at the tech. We've got to enjoy it. I might start making content out of it. And, and then, then that, after a while... Did that get competitive? Uh, it did, yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> I've normally beat him on a racing, although he has got better. I played him the other day and I thought, how comes, how comes he's still on my tail? Um... <laughs> So, yeah, no, we did, but then it was just like, okay, we've got... Uh, it was a bit of like, I've got this. Like, uh, we're going to work hard, but we're also going to enjoy ourselves as well. Um, and then, obviously, the, the you know, COVID hit and all, all that happened. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. I love what I do. Mm-hmm. And, obviously, with the old job, I took the best bits from that job. So, sometimes, I think, you can do a job for so long, and people are like, oh, get, maybe it's like, oh, I've got a pension. I know loads of people, it's a police force or, like, Work for some huge public companies, and I'm like, oh, I've got to keep going because I'm going to get a pension. And I just think, isn't it sad that that's the only thing that keeps it's you going? It's so sad. There's so many people that just don't love what they do. You've got yeah. to love what you do. And it's says Nick from Stephen Barlett, but it's so true. And he says, um, just because you're really good at something doesn't mean that's what you should do. Because yeah. the classic ones, so what are you good at? You, if you're good at it, that's what you should do. Yeah. So you've got to love it. You might not be good at it, but if yeah. you love it. And you lose time doing it, and you've got passion for it. That's what you should do. Yeah, yeah. and that's always been like I tell people that, and they're like, "What do you mean? I'm really good at that." Obviously, that's why I do it. It's like, do you yeah. love it though? Yeah. Well, I don't, no, but I'm good at it. And it's just like, mm. it's the other track. I mean, that's not bad. At least you're doing something you're good at. But that's kind of like a work <clears throat> to live situation, oh, it is. isn't it? But there's a load of people like it. There's yeah. miserable CEOs, yeah. miserable directors that are stuck, and I know they could. They're so, so good and they could do it. But then it is the difference around have they got have they got the balls to jump? Yeah, yeah. You know, have they got the balls to come in and notice yeah. and do it? And it does take a lot out of you. Yeah. Um, and I think as you get older, it's it's harder to take that yeah. decision. Yeah. Mm. Because you think, well, I've done 25 years in this corporate industry or whatever it is. How? My oh. skill sets are only this. Yeah. But what you don't realise is you don't like it, first and foremost. Yeah. But if you want to do something else, if you've got 25, 30 years experience, there's so many transferable skills into doing something else. You yeah. might not take every single one, it might not be necessary, exactly. but you're going to take half a dozen to a dozen skills yeah. with you that you're really good at. Yeah. You've nurtured, you've grown, you've learned. Exactly, yeah. But it's understanding that and realizing actually, um, I could be really good at art painting or whatever it yeah. is, you know, from sitting behind a desk all the time. Yeah. But it's understanding that, isn't it? Or having. A, having that opportunity come along and someone says, look, I've got, why don't you try this? Just give it a little go. Yeah. But they don't get that because they're like, no, pension. I know yeah. what money I'm going to take home. Exactly. We need to take home X <clears throat> amount of amount to pay the bills. And people have are like, I, without naming names, obviously, but I know a lot of people and I, I say it to them straight to their face, but they're like, when I'm 70, I'll have two God. million pound in my pension. Who and I'm cares? like, your mid forties, uh, what are you doing now? To enjoy, and I don't mean like go and blow your money now, don't put money in a pension or any anything like that. I'm not saying that. But like, there's so many people like, when I'm 70, I want to, and I'm like, you've got that mindset of, I'm 70 and I go on three holidays a year. And I'm like, you're going to look back and regret, yeah. why didn't I just enjoy what I, yeah. I could have done at 45? Yeah. That's one of the things we've spoken about before is taking a leap of faith. Yeah. Yeah. And just doing it. What yeah. makes you happy? What drives you? Yeah. What gives you that buzz? The thing for me was visualising. I was 36, I was like, let's go for 10 years. And for whatever reason, I'd never really thought like that before. Mm. But I was like, 46, so my kids are probably leaving home. And like, have I really tested myself to do my own thing? Yeah. And I'll always live in regret. And my cousins and my brother or other family members, they've run their own business. And I think I can do it. Yeah. But I'll never know. And I think the thing for me was also, I just can't work for someone else. Like, I was quite well liked by most people. I was pretty like bullish on certain things and didn't, get along with everyone but people loved my passion i think and my effectiveness to deliver um i'm probably just gonna get a job somewhere else and i'd happily work for someone else again Mm. but i do think even if you're at the top of an organization you're not really in control of it Mm. you're not really in control of it if you're of a massive company if you're on the board 
don't actually have control. That's my view. Now, you're in a small loss-making business or whatever that may be, but you have that ability, autonomy yeah. to go and make the decisions. Did you find as well that like, when you were like a, a director level, if you started at the bottom, you become less and less hands-on? As you, I like as you that. Do you know what? I was I was so like, I know I've got a team. And I'm, I, I like people, but I'm like, I've got to be the best. Yeah. Um, I've got to be the best at saving money. I've got to be the best at negotiating the team. Um, and I did help people, but it was almost overnight where, in fact, one person coming to the business, a very senior person, worked for B&Q um, as a director of operations, and he really challenged me on certain things and made me realise about like, about running a team and driving, a, inspiring a team and yeah. not, um, not leading from the back, not sort of leading from the front. And almost overnight, I came in with a passion of like, all I care about is these people trying to take my jobs. I want you to take my job. And I want you because I'm competitive and I know I'm going to push myself, but I want you to take my job. And I used to say that to people. I used to say, listen, what are you doing this week to take my job? Uh, really? Yeah. Because I was, one, I was really confident in myself, but two, I was like, I wanted them to constantly push yeah. and re be relentlessly good at pushing. We had an amazing team of people. I mean, yeah. every single day in that job for 17 years, I genuinely think I've laughed my head off. Um, <laughs> Probably got to the point where it was just like, which is unusual like in the IT department to be. It is, funny. it is, yeah. I mean, it's it was like a procurement team and a yeah. thing. But again, I don't know that many funny procurement teams, so you're probably right. We were probably really <laughs> dull and thought we were fun, um, but we had a fantastic team, and all I cared about was people taking my job. Yeah, I loved it. I loved that. Like that's motivation. Because so it's very inspiring, isn't it? Yeah. It's very motivational just yeah. to kind of get the best out of your team. Yeah. And, say to them, right. and I didn't in the end. Oh, sorry, oh, go on, no, go on, no, sorry. In the end, I, I could go away from that. In my last year or two years, really, I could have left and that place would run. It just didn't need me there. Yeah. I was doing more strategic stuff and I was doing stuff across the business. So I started to enjoy understanding the wider business and helping there. But, um, you know, when I left, that team continued to be like top performing. Um, yeah. A lot of them are still there. And, um, yeah, like in any business, no matter how good you think you are, when you're gone, you, that place will carry on. Exactly. Yeah. And I sort of knew that. But then when you actually experience watching it, going, oh, gosh, yeah, actually, didn't really need, didn't really need me at all, especially for the day-to-day -day running. Yeah. Um, but obviously, strategic development and changes, I think they missed me. I think they say they missed me. But yeah. um, You know it's on camera, right? They're, they're people yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they'll hear that and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's Brad Hi, who? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we wrap this up, um, have you got any kind of like good tips and insights to give out to other people thinking of starting up a business or they've got a little side hustle they want to progress um i think the side hustle thing is good um you're not taking any risk of leaving like, yeah. your income that's coming in um i would say do you know what someone told me when i left network 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 and they're a very good business consultant um coach and um I was like, I know loads of people. I talk, I know so many people. You ask me for anything, I go, I know someone that does that. Or, you know, um, But it was only probably in the last year where I realised the power of networking. Yeah. I would say, go and speak to loads of people. And you'd be surprised. There'll be people out there, especially if you're young, that businesses wouldn't feel threatened about. They'll give you a lot of information mm. or go and work with them on jobs. Yeah. Um, you'd be surprised. There's not many people that be threatened. There'll be some people that are threatened, but there'll be others that go, look, come and do this work with me come and experience it or just offer your time for free um go and like learn that and don't overburden yourself with debt would be my thing yeah. you can actually do stuff you know advertise that you do it if you're confident you can do it and you know you can hire it the next day or you know yeah. you can go and deliver it i would say go and advertise the service. people are like what do you mean how can you advertise a service if you can't if you haven't yeah. got the kit it's like and everyone makes that mistake when touching that earlier on so i would say number one if you've got the itch to do it yeah, yeah. do it because you you will regret it yeah. like it's a deathbed regret of like, I know that's normally family, but there will be an element of like, did I really do my best? Yeah. There's loads of people I know like that that were unbelievably like clever and could have run a business and they've just not done it. So I just think don't live in regret. Yeah. You can do it much cheaper than you think. And you've got YouTube, which will teach you literally everything. Exactly. Exactly that. It's like that's never been like, we was look, I was looking at some retro games the other day. It was the treasure hunt game, right? So it was Annika Rice. And people were going through books, obviously, to answer it. Now, that was, like, obvious. It was 1983. That was when I was born. But I thought, there's people looking through books, and now you can just go on your phone and literally find an answer to anything. Yeah. It was it's trying to explain to kids the other day that if you want to get somewhere, we used to have a massive A to Z. Yeah. So when I was working for a particular company, I used to travel over the country yeah. doing bits of sales with bits and pieces. Yeah. 
then you'd have a massive A to Z, then I'd photocopy it, sellotape the page, so I'd highlight my route, sellotape all the pages together, <laughs> then as you're driving along, you kind of write, what, junction, what on the M4, yeah. right, okay, fold it, put it away. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, and now it's just like, Sat nav. It's there really you weird. And some and you explain to the kid. You and saying, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Just what you need. Yeah. Another one, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it is weird. Like I say to the kids, oh, in the back of cars, there was these things in the pockets in the back. So you'll say, like, oh, my car don't have one. Maybe other cars do. But you're thinking, we used to go in there to get a map, and you had to learn how to read a map at seven or eight years old, because otherwise your family was stuffed. Or you're yeah. going to have to park upside the road and work it out. They're <laughs> looking at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it is now like it's weird, but time goes quick. Yeah. When you're 30s, you still think you're 20. When you're 47, you still think you're 20, mate. Don't worry. About hopefully, that. hopefully <laughs> yeah. that's the case. But like when you after 35, you start making some groaning noises, and you realise like mm, I'm yeah, I'm just you don't regret it basically because by the time you're 30, you'll be 40, and um, yeah, yeah, that's a big thing. Just don't live in regret. Mm -hmm. The question of are you determined? If you're determined, you will do it. If you're determined or relentless, you will do something. It might not be the thing you think you're going to do. Yeah. But um, just big thing for me is don't live in regret. And don't make it harder than you realise. It's not as hard, actually, to do the basics. It's not as hard as people make out. Yeah. Oh, I've got to have this. I've got to have that. I've got to have this complex business plan. I've got to have a website before I start. Otherwise, ever... no, you don't. You, you don't, don't have any of that. You spin up a Facebook page and you just, if that's your target audience and where they really are, just do that. Yeah, and get that's, feedback. Yeah. That's something as well. <clears throat> excuse me. We, when we've spoken to other people, it's knowing w what your demographic is. Like yours is all yeah. corporate, so yeah. potentially LinkedIn. But um, so for me, for for my PT business, yeah. it's mainly Facebook because the age group and the demographic yeah. that, that I kind of work with between like thirty five and, and sixty five, seventy, yeah. of all nine, we're all using uh, Facebook. Really, yeah. there's no point in me doing TikTok because that's a, a younger generation. Yeah. So it's knowing what platform your your target audience are going to use and what they're looking for and how to get exactly. to them, right? So, yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 again, we're going back to, you've got to, it's having that hat on and knowing what you've got to do with this sort of marketing and, you know, social media and then yeah. finance and everything else. It's yeah. understanding everything, right? It is. But then I think you're all, and everyone will make the mistake. Like I'll, I'll say to people, don't buy that. You don't need to. Just go and hire it or yeah. um, just put raw content out and just gauge your audience or go and speak to these people. And people still make a mistake. They're like, I know what you're saying, yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not uh, hearing you. Again, yeah. it's like we said earlier as well, it's like not being afraid to make that mistake. Yeah, exactly. The quicker you make mistakes, the quicker you learn. Just Massively. don't repeat them. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true, isn't Massively it? Massively true. Yeah. Brad, it's been brilliant, mate. Before we finally, finally wrap this up, do you want to let everyone know what your socials are? Um, yep. Facebook, Instagram, whatever it's on, and your website and how they can contact you. Yes, fuzzybrick.co.uk. Yep. We do have an 0330 number. Can't remember it. I won't say it out loud. Um, info or hello at fuzzybrick.co.uk if you want to contact us. Uh, on socials, it's fuzzybrickvr for Instagram. It's fuzzybrick for Facebook and fuzzybrick on LinkedIn. And I think TikTok might be the same, fuzzybrick. So you'll see us. It's the bear logo, wearing the VR goggles, the fuzzies to do with a bear and the goggles is like the, the brick. Like so brick. that's the kind of link that we've <laughs> randomly come up with. Um, but yeah, you'll see us. And uh, yeah, thanks. Check us out if you need any help. Let's know. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. it. No, great fun. It. Been great Thanks fun. for coming. Thank you. See you later.